Welcome to this overview of Seasons 19 on console, on Farming Simulator 19, with me, Mr. Sealy P. Oh yes, Seasons is here. Winter is coming, literally. Um, Realismus modding, I spoke to Joss last week actually, weirdly, I didn't know it was coming out um, at the point I spoke to him from Realismus modding to ask about the conversion over to console and whether or not anything in the conversion over had been lost because sometimes obviously on PC and console there are certain things you can and can't do and had we lost anything. He came back to me and said everything is as it is on PC. That said, there is going to be an update or there are going to be some updates coming up for the PC version in the next couple of months which we're not going to get on console. Some of it we're not going to get on console. Anyway, so as it stands, it's pretty much as it is on PC. Winter is coming and spring and summer and autumn too. The Seasons mod changes the fundamental way to play Farming Simulator by introducing seasons and changing all aspects of gameplay such as weather, growth, economy, vehicle maintenance and animals to suit. Season 19 has gotten even more immersive with new visuals and sounds that better integrate into the game and gameplay, including wind and all... I mean, it's just... wow. Um, depending on how strong the wind is for any given day is how loud the wind is you know you can't get your head around it all the people that are complaining saying when's it coming when's it coming it's been too long blah, blah. you have to understand this changes everything absolutely everything um animals um seed to the management of your herds with new breeds of cattle pigs sheep and chickens or take care of horses for a steady income you don't buy horses anymore you look after horses um you run a stabling system um the animals you can buy animals for breeding animals for meat uh chickens for eggs chickens for breeding you know it, it really does change absolutely everything so i'm installing it what i'm going to do is just pop out of here a second because what you also get as part of this we do have a first geo. If you don't know what a geo is, if you're new to seasons, if you're new to the, the franchise, a geo is a geographical, <coughs> excuse me, add-on. And there are loads and loads of these available on PC. They are going to start popping up now for console, and these will change all of the settings regarding weather and temperature and day, um, how much light you get over the course of the day, um, all, all sorts of stuff. It changes a whole lot of things for certain places around the world. Um, and more specifically, it can be certain counties, it can be certain um, states in America. Um, that one there, Seasons Geo Snowy Lands, pretty much gives you snow... Uh, hang on, wrong one. Snow all the time. Um, it's time to take a break from farming and have a winter holiday. Go to Snowy Lands. And basically, it's eternal winter with high snow. Um, whether you would enjoy that or not, I don't know. But... Um, there will be more coming. The Geo Four Season standard is set in the UK, I believe. But you also get from Giant Software and Realismus mod modding today the Hauer Snowpack. Um, this is for dealing with snow, because when it does snow, you might want to clear it from the yards and stuff like that. So we do get this as well, which I'm going to install right now. With that done. I'm going to start a new map. Now here's the other thing with Seasons. You can run Seasons on an existing gameplay, an existing save game. However, it will ask you whether you want to reset because it will set everything to spring. Do you want to reset your crops and fields? So if you've got stuff already growing and planted, um, it will reset everything. You can have the option to leave it as it is, but it does say that seasons may not run properly if you don't reset all your crops. So you can do it on an existing save game. If you've got animals and things already, it will change everything on your animals too. Um, if you've got horses and you've built them up and built them up and they're worth a lot of money, sell them all first, then put your seasons on. Um, because when you come back on, the horses have a zero value. They're not worth anything because you don't own them. You just look after them. Um, so if you want your money from your horses because you put a load of time into it, sell them first before doing it. Um, I'm going to start a new one, I think, is probably the best thing to do. Yeah, we'll go on to... I think we're going to New Farmer. And... I think Geiselsberg was set up for it. But we're going to Sussex Farms. Um, right. 
Okay, so spring is here, flowers and trees blossom, it's time to cultivate and sow your seeds. If you're not familiar with the basics of the game, we know that already. Um, okay, don't show again. Now, like I say, if you were doing this on, a, on an already um, established save game, it would say to you, do you want to reset? Um, and that's kind of the bit where you might have a bit of a panic. And if you've got animals and stuff, that can make a big difference. Um, so it really depends if you want to take that chance or not. So if I click OK, and OK, you can already see, top of the map, the menu's changed. Now, this is an overview video. This is a Seasons overview. This is just giving you a quick idea about Seasons, what's in it, what's changed. I'm going to do a series of videos um, in a little bit more detail as to how it changed. Now, I know it's been out on PC for quite a while, and I know quite a few people have already done videos and stuff on it. I'm going to do them from a... From, from, from a console players perspective simply because um i just think for the console guys out there that are watching you know to see that i'm not playing on pc and telling you this is what you've got i'm playing on ps4 and saying this is what it's like on ps4 this is what i've got so um as you can see around already a lot of the trees have no leaves on them no foliage you can just kind of see they're quite bare apart from the pine and fir trees and stuff which obviously are evergreens they're all right but you look across and it looks fairly open and fairly bare um, but the top right hand corner things have changed a little bit we do have our weather forecast that's still there now the weather has changed massively we do have forecasts and you know the weather forecasts are very very detailed things can change over the course of a day incredibly um, the further away the forecast goes so the, the further ahead the more unpredictable it is that is not set in stone so where it may say one thing that may not happen temperature we've got uh, three degrees is the air temperature four degrees is the ground temperature now i've got mine in degrees centigrade because obviously in the uk you know you can put it on fahrenheit it's in touch we'll have a look at the settings for that in a moment um that will tell you whether or not you can plant stuff and if you plant stuff will it germinate we do have three different states now the growth states that are in now we've got planted germinated and germination failed because if you put it in the wrong time it might not germinate so you might get a whole field that says germination failed you might get a patch that says germination failed um, what's also different as well is weeds weeds massively changed I'm probably going to try and if I do a let's play with seasons on I'm going to run weeds which I don't ever normally do because weeds have been radically altered you don't get entire fields just suddenly weeds you get little patches that you can deal with that you can weed and and they've also added in preemptive spraying now now a lot of people argued that on the original on the base game version that was a thing i never found it was a thing preemptive spraying never worked on seasons preemptive spraying you can go out and spray your fields and you won't get any weeds in that field but you might only get a few patches here and there so is it worth doing it? and all these things you have to kind of start thinking about um that little symbol next to the temperature it's telling you it's spring, that's the spring symbol, and it does say early spring at the moment, zero, 01 early spring. That's because each of our seasons is split into sections, and that depends how many days you want to run as well. If you're new to seasons, you're new to FS19, this is all going to boggle your mind, and that's why I'm going to go into a lot more detail. If people start coming saying, you missed this, you missed that, I'm going to miss stuff because this is just the overview. This is talking about a lot of the stuff that's in here, what's changed, what is in here, but the, the more detailed videos will come on particular things where I'm going to go into a bit more depth about it. Okay, what I've done is I open the help window. Um, actually, before I'm going to do that, what we're going to do is have a quick look uh, in here. If we look at this now, we've got cultivated, growing, down the side, ready to harvest, harvested, ploughed, removed tops, withered, planted germination failed those are new they're added in plant withering on seasons is on standard you cannot turn withering off because it's part of the whole seasonal process planted will say whether something's been planted but you might get germination failed um, in a crop and it might be across the whole crop you might get little small bits um, that's just the way it is now i've got weeds on at mine now that's not going to show anything at the moment because i've got nothing planted um, but you do get I'm just having a look actually to see small little patches and if we get any at any point when we're going to go into more detail on crops and stuff like that um, we'll have a look at weeds and the small patches of those but those two yeah planted and germination failed are completely new um, if we scroll across no we're done with that one 
soil composition stuff is all fine yeah so those two are the ones that are different but with this now open to open up the menu for seasons if i press l1 it says show seasons menu l1 and the options button so l1 and options will open that on uh xbox that's going to be slightly different um, but i would open up the help window that's going to give you some help so this is a new menu now like i said i've got mine set on celsius but i'm going to go back to the this is what it starts on when you open that window up so you got your calendar and this is your planting and harvesting calendar down the left hand side now if you played on on, on seasons and fs17 some of this will be the same some of it will be different um there will be some differences you're going to see as we go along um and you've got each season is split into three so you've got early mid and late in the, each of those seasons now at the moment this is set on nine day seasons i'm going to show you that in a minute because you can change that too um and all of those are in blue so those are the temperatures that you can plant crops when they turn white then you're in the planting zone it will allow you to do that so whilst that is saying that i can plant wheat now that red line is saying where we are at the moment um i can plant i'm within the window the season's window for planting wheat however the temperature isn't right if i plant now they may not germinate it's a bit of a gamble um barley five degrees six degrees 18 degrees for cotton um but you notice there on cotton there's no planting window there's no planting window for cotton because we don't usually grow cotton in the uk and because it's set on a uk um geo the standard version it won't allow you to do cotton so if you want to run cotton you might have to use a different geo but that simulates what you would be able to do realistically um where you are that's kind of the point of it um although does it doesn't even show sugarcane does it oh yeah sugarcane's the same down the bottom doesn't have a planting window or harvesting window because we don't do sugarcane in the uk um so you might need to change those so if we look across we've got one to three four to six seven to nine that's in each of the um each of the seasons so we've got our spring our summer our autumn and our winter and then if you look across in the yellow on there the key is down the bottom bottom right planting season harvesting season you've got when you can harvest things like all seed radish poplar um, and grass you can um, seed and harvest all year long apart from winter in the winter you can't it won't let you do it in the winter grass you can get away with a little bit early winter but then after that you can't plant anymore um, so that's just a guide to help you you know with when you're supposed to be doing it there are certain points of the year soybean and corn you have to leave quite late late spring into early summer you can plant but again depends on the temperature depends on you know, a whole load of factors um so go across one we're on to the weather forecast so the weather forecast on here tells you weather forecast for today and then the next day because obviously this is a nine day seasons at the moment um so it's very very detailed for today it gives you the maximum temperature the average temperature and the minimum temperature it then says precipitation so the likelihood of rain whether it's going to rain or not um and then yeah in millimeters then precipitation percentage so you know on the tuesday where it's showing rain it's saying 80 percent chance of rain it's gonna rain um wind speeds then are, are all there now the wind speeds are going to have an effect on things like <laughs> and this is why i'm saying it's so complicated to get your head around um that's going to affect things like drying grass you don't have to ted grass anymore to get it to turn to hay you can cut it and leave it out and it will dry itself i know um and if the, the obviously the stronger the wind is the stronger the breeze the more likelihood is it's going to and obviously the warmer it is it's going to at the bottom drying potential we've got a minus then loads of zeros that's basically saying the drying potential is pretty rubbish at the moment temperatures are low um you know right the way through you've been looking to mind you it's nine day seasons isn't it because we're still in spring as the temperatures start to increase those figures will change you'd have a zero a minus means it's not going to dry whatsoever a plus will tell you um that drying potential is good a plus plus means drying potential is very very good so with heat and strong winds will come very very good drying potential um now as we go along this weather forecast 
today very very detailed like nine every three hours isn't it yeah every three hours you've got something tuesday a little bit more detail a little less detail but still there as we go further on it's more unpredictable so right on the far far end where it says sunday's weather don't rely on that to be actual and that's the thing with seasons as well on fs19 it does so the bottom forecast uncertainty increases with time this will throw things at you success is not guaranteed success is not a given you could do everything right and still something goes wrong you could have a sudden cold snap and have some frost and it could kill off a crop um you could have you know horrendous weather strong winds no wind you, you know you could have problems with drought you could have loads and loads of hot weather and drought believe it or not which brings us on to the next menu crop info we've got frost resistance <laughs> and drought resistance this is crazy stuff um so it goes down all the crops and it tells you in their different states what their resistances are to these things so for example wheat's frost resistance in seed state it's got medium um frost resistance cotton none whatsoever that's why it hasn't we haven't got it on the uk geo because cotton just doesn't frost it will kill it just that's it done um We've got low frost resistance on sunflower, soybean, corn, things like that. Why things like soybean and corn are put into the ground a lot later because they don't like the frost whatsoever. Um, as a young plant, some of them are quite high, some are still low. As you go down that list, you can see. But as a mature plant, you would like to think the wheat put into the ground will be maturing through into the summer. It shouldn't be, or summer into autumn, there shouldn't be any frost because it has no frost resistance if you leave your wheat barley oat you leave that in the ground too long as a mature plant before it withers obviously um you could have a cold snap in late autumn and could kill it it's got no frost resistance so you've got to be careful the same is also true with drought resistance if you plant stuff late or you go through the summer and the the moisture in the ground drops um you can have problems you can have crops fail because you have too much heat too much sun so you might have to plant crops that you know are going to do very very well you know look at cotton again for drought resistance cotton has low drought resistance medium as young plant very very high drought resistance as a mature plant because cotton loves hot weather you know so that's a screen that's going to become very important um, the potential for frost damage increases as air temperature falls below zero. Potential for drought damage increases when the soil water content is below 12%. Use the measurement tool to monitor the soil water content. We'll have a look at the measurement tool in a moment. Uh, going across one more. Animals. Uh, we don't have any in the pens yet. We are going to look at the animals in a moment. But things have changed with regard to animals and their types that's going to be quite complicated we'll have a look at a minute economy now this is based on we haven't had anything at the moment this is kind of an average economy across the board so for each crop it tells you during the seasons when these things historically sell well when the prices are good when the prices are low based upon how it would be in the real world this even though you look at the sell points and say okay price is not looking too bad you're going to get parts of the year where it plummets which it forces you into doing different jobs different crops different things to try and maintain an income all the way through the year forestry becomes a lot more important when you're playing seasons because when you get into the winter months there's not a lot you can actually do unless you skip through the winter um forestry is a thing you can pick up in the winter and and normally prices for lumber in the winter are very very good people are using their log burners and wood stoves and that kind of stuff and and because there's not really much else you can do you can make a tidy bit of money doing a bit of forestry i know not everyone likes it but that's just a fact so if we scroll down you'll see things will change like that one sunflowers big big dip off in uh winter but then rises towards the end of winter beginning of spring um soybean very very high profit margins end of spring early summer but then really plummet out towards autumn um corn very high in early summer very high in late autumn but a big dip off in the middle of summer um potatoes is a more gradual scale but again very low in spring very very high in the winter months the root crops because that's forage food for animals potatoes sugar wheat things like that the prices are going to increase around the time when people want them and need them um cotton's across the board again we won't be running cotton on a uk 
um, Geo. Sugarcane, the same thing. Seeds, they're always set. But there's everything. We've got eggs, wool, everything on here. Um, water, total mixed ration. These are all going to be set as well. Wood chips, silage, diesel are all pretty much set. Now it says air on there because Jim's got air on this map, but that's not on all of them. Um, Digestate, you don't get very much for any time really. Um, pig food's expensive. There you go. But so that's your economy. That's kind of you need to be looking at that as well for good times to sell and not sell. Then we move on to the crop rotation planner. This is all new. There we go. Um, so rotation planners you can do everything right you can plow your fields you can lime your fields you can cultivate you can fertilize you can do everything right um but the rotation planner is in place to simulate more like real life that if you keep putting the same crop in the ground and taking all the the you know nutrients out of the ground and you, you're not replacing anything do, not doing anything right um that's gonna have a detrimental effect on your crops so each one of these a b c and d um goes down the page now, obviously, if you're running 20 fields, you haven't got 20 rotation planners. This is just to give you an idea, and you could probably jot them down or something like that. So, for example, rotation planner A. If I decide, and we have got fallow as well, if you leave a field fallow for one year, it helps it. So if I go down one, and the next year I'd put in wheat, for example, because I left it fallow the first, uh, first cycle, first year, when I put wheat in the ground, I'm getting over one which means i'm getting a good yield of that because i left it fallow the next crop in if i go with wheat again it drops below one which means i'm not really doing much for the ground it's not helping it's a cereal crop it's not great uh same with barley oh grass though the grass crop sorry not grass cotton we can't do cotton on this can we canola though okay right so if i put canola in the ground that's an oilseed crop so if i do canola interestingly if i put canola in next that increases my wheat bonus as well from the year previous which is unusual um if i come down another one i could decide to leave it fallow again or put something else in because i did canola the previous year the next year the wheat bonus is pretty good barley's all right oats canola though drops because i've already done it sunflower drops legumes um so our soybeans but corn will do all right that will come up a bit but that also changes the wheat further up but this will then give you a great idea of how and what you need to do for each crop type so for each field what am i going to put in next what's going to be the best thing what's going to give me a better yield what's going to improve you know my return if you just keep putting the same thing in which you kind of sometimes get into a habit of doing oh yeah that's my wheat field um it can have a detrimental effect you might want to leave it fallow again and then you might want to go for something else grass you might want to put in poplars sugar beet maybe potatoes corn so you can go through and see in there i've got a range of different crops on that particular field whatever one it is rotation plan a um, and according to that it does mean one year i've got to leave it maybe two years leave it fallow but i can get some good yields off that the rest of the time that's what the rotation planner is for the crop rotation planner is to just give you a guide on to how to get a better yield that's kind of the point of it um, and then we can obviously we can go across um, and we can do four rotation plans you might even want to take it you know you could do each of these rotation plans for four fields take a picture on your phone take a screenshot of it if you wanted to and you could have them stored to one side so you could have 20 fields running and have five screenshots to just you know it's entirely up to you how you want to do it then we move on to our settings screen in our settings like i said we can have celsius or fahrenheit i've got mine celsius just because i'm in the uk just in the habit of doing celsius um freedom height i think it's referred to in the us um fahrenheit uh seasons and interactions on or off and that basically at the start of it, each season just gives you a little bit of information you don't have to have it on you can or not this is the one that changes things massively um so you can change the season length the shortest you can have is three days so um you have three days for spring three days for summer three days for autumn three days for winter um so your day one will be early spring day two will be mid spring day three will be late spring 
Now, obviously this is going to go in threes because it needs to bump that up for each one. So we can go for a six day rotation in each season, a nine, a 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. We can have 24 day seasons. That's eight, that's eight days, isn't it? That's eight days per, um, per section. So early spring would be eight days, mid spring would be eight days, late spring would be eight days. Um, that's big. I mean, that takes on a lot. Um, now, what Seasons also does, what realism is, and this is why this, this has taken so long to get to us, because of how much it changes. Um, things like um, your animals and their growth and what you make on them, it's spread across the entire year. So if you decide to play on three day seasons, you're only going to be putting in X amount per day. If you decide to run 24 day seasons, you're not going to have to put in 24 times as much, or however many, a multiple of that, as much feed in. The feed you're going to put in, it gets spread across those 24 days. So you're going to be putting far less in per day over the course of the year, it will all work out exactly the same. They've averaged it out across the whole year. So you're not going to be penalised for running a 24-day season. Um, likewise, you're not going to be penalised for running a three-day season. So it all balances itself out across the entire thing. Uh, crop moisture you can have on or off. I, I ran it on on FS17 just because it made it kind of more immersive. Um, that will be whether or not you can harvest or not. If the crop moisture is too high, it won't let you harvest it. Um, so you might want to turn that off. Snow tracks you can have on or off depending on whether you're going to run snow. Now if you don't w want snow on you can turn snow off. So even in the winter it may be showing snow, you won't get snow on the ground. I like to run that on, that's just a personal preference. Um, so those are your settings, those are all the things you can change. We are going to go into more detail um, on individual videos I think is the best way of putting that. Um, so what else do we need to do right okay we need to go into here and we need to go to miscellaneous because under miscellaneous i think it's under miscellaneous we have got we've got the howard snowpack which i did at the start we should have where is it there we go we've got the lizard mt9 this was called the wopster before this is an incredibly important piece of equipment and it's often overlooked and forgotten about on seasons this is your um, measuring tool and it comes incredibly handy five grand it's not cheap but um, what we'll do we'll buy one and what I also need to check for it'll be under placeables I think maybe miscellaneous so under animal pens if we scroll across this is to do with animals this is important as well you need to know this um, we've got a water pump the water pump is a brilliant, brilliant thing for seasons. Um, and what you can do is you buy the water pump and you place it next to the water trough on any of your animals. That will make sure those animals never run out of water. Um, I think it will keep it at something like 15% full. So if it, it runs <coughs> 15 or 20%, something like that. Um, so that if the water level drops below a certain point, I think it's every, it might be 15 minutes I'm thinking of, every 15 minutes it will run. And when it runs, um, it kind of does a, a, a check, and it will check every 15 minutes. If the water level drops too low, that will automatically put water into the trough, just enough that they don't run out. It's not going to fill the trough up, but just enough that they don't run out. That's an important bit of kit as well on Seasons. That comes with Seasons now. That's important. You're going to need that. Absolutely going to need that. Um, so those are the two things we needed to make sure we had as far as the wopster goes if i open my hand tool the same as you do with a chainsaw there's your wopster to activate the hand tool you press circle so if i press circle okay so we have got on the measurement tool we have got the location um it does say on uh, Rizmus website, just for orientation and screenshots, just so you know where you are. Um, we've got elevation uh, reference point is the water level. Um, so, yeah, that's just height above the water level. You've got the fruit or crop type, uh, type of crop in the soil, if any. Uh, we've then got crop height, growth progress. 
Um, it may stay under 100% if it can't reach maturity. That's to do with trees and stuff. So the moment it's 33% growth. So that's on, on, on its first growth stage. Uh, the next one down is um, crop moisture. Um, that determines whether you can harvest the crop or not. Um, in the future, it, uh, you will always be able to harvest a crop, but higher moisture content gives lower quality. Uh, cap to 25%, which is fully moist. Um, so that's at 15, which isn't too bad. Then the bottom one is ground wetness. That doesn't say fertilisation level. There is one for fertilisation level. We'll have a look at that in a second. Um, the bottom one is ground wetness. The wetness of the ground determines traction in the future. This will also affect soil compaction. That's going to be more for PC unless they bring it to console. Um, but that will also affect things like drought. If the water um, soil wetness drops too low, um, that's when you might have problems with crops that aren't too hardy with drought and those kind of things. What we'll do is just come out and go over to a crop. Oh, that's just a stubble, isn't it, in the field? But Yes, yeah, so that one shows there, the fertilisation one. If you go a little bit further down, uh, that's got a little leaf. So it's got zero fertilisation state on that one. Um, and then if we find a tree, I don't think we've got one close, have we? Um, it will tell you the growth of the tree... Uh, I think it only works on pines and firs and ones that you can plant yourself. Um, but this will work, like I say, on bales. Um, it will work on, let me just have a look, pallets. It will also tell you the contents of a pallet uh, with its volume and its amount in litres. Um, what else will it do? Uh, yeah, bales, it will tell you the content of the bale and how much... Um, what it is and how much is in it. It will also tell you the fermentation level. So if you've... Um, wrapped grass bales to ferment into silage it will tell you the fermentation level how long it's going to take that's a big change as well if you're new to all of this um, you can't just wrap grass bales and they're automatically silage bales on seasons you wrap your bales and they have to ferment in that wrap no different to when you cover a bunker silo um, and it takes a while to ferment it takes a while to ferment that again is spread evenly across the year so depending on what day cycles and stuff you're running um, that will have an impact so this tool is incredibly useful for you know, a whole array of stuff um, and one that I would advise any budding farmer to get their hands on um, I'm trying to think I don't want to miss anything off but there are going to be things I'm going to miss I know there are because I'm trying to go through this kind of systematically uh, we've got repair of vehicles and stuff as well that's a little bit different now let's put that away he says, there we go, put that away, let's close that menu for the moment. Right, vehicle. Whoa, look at the maintenance level on that, that is horrendous. That's saying that it needs everything doing to it. Now, certain mods, and by certain modders, um, may need to be altered to allow for seasons and repair and things like that. Um, some modders are already doing it. Um, maps and stuff are being converted, have been converted. A lot of mods and stuff are saying seasons ready now. There's a thing called the snow mask, so when it snows, a lot of buildings and stuff, it means snow won't come into the buildings. That's important too. Um, some mods won't have that on yet, so you find if you use them and it doesn't say it's got a season mask or it's not seasons ready, then potentially um, you're going to get you're going to get snow inside your barns and stuff. Um, saying about snow inside your barns and stuff also brings me onto the bale situation, um, which again we're going to go into more detail on in, in other videos, hopefully. Um, bales need to be stored indoors. Silage bales, once they're wrapped, they're okay to be left outside. They're wrapped. Things like um, grass, hay, straw needs to be stored under cover because it will degrade. It will degrade in bad weather, it will degrade faster in rain. If you cut grass and leave it, it will gradually degrade away to nothing. If you make grass bales ready to wrap but don't wrap them immediately, they will automatically start degrading. So when you come back to them, rather than having 4,000 litres, you're going to have 3,990. You know, it will gradually start to drop. Um, I'm just curious. Um, because repair and maintenance has also been changed. Um, there are repair and maintenance costs now, and it can get a little bit complicated, but that again is spread over the course of a year. It's done to balance itself out. Right, as far forward as I can go. 
I don't need to lift that up, but on Sussex Farm you can if you want to. So if we go into here... Wow, 146 days old this vehicle. Now, look at this for the workshop. We have got repair and we've got repaint. That is new on Seasons. So what you can do, as your vehicle ages and wears, you will get visual wear and you will get wear on parts, etc. Which means you can come in and you can repair your vehicle. So if I repair my vehicle now, 384, the repair costs aren't as bad either. They aren't as high or as mad. You think if, if your vehicle was in need of complete repair, it would have cost an absolute bomb before. But of course it's spread over time. Now, if I come back out of this menu, my vehicle... It's still going to have scratches and dings and dents and stuff on it. You can see the scratches on the body. Well, actually, let me that down. You can see the scratches and stuff on the paintwork. Now, I've repaired that vehicle. That's in perfect working order. In the UK, that will pass its MOT no problem at all. Now, if I want to put that back to its original concourse condition when I bought it, I can repaint it. Let's try it again. Right. Repaint. L3. So the repainting of a vehicle is far more expensive than the maintenance and repair. 2,805 if you want to repaint. Let's press yes. It'll repaint it in the colour it was. It's not going to suddenly change the colour. Well, I hope it doesn't. And if you look now on the bodywork, all those little scratches have gone. I actually quite like that. I like the fact that you can leave a vehicle and it can look battered and scratched and damaged be perfectly maintained it's going to run no problem at all you're not going to have any problems with it but it kind of shows the age of the vehicle that's been used a lot and you know i do like that so there you go uh, maintenance repair that's another feature to throw into the mix and i'm just thinking this is going to be quite a long video but let's move on and have a look at animals very quickly like i said we're not going to get through everything i'm going to do more videos in a little bit more detail i think um have i mentioned the three fertilizing states there are three fertilizing states now uh, I don't think I looked at that before, did I? Whereas before, we had um, only two fertilisation states. Uh, that will be under soil composition. If you look on the right-hand side now, fertilised, you've got three different bars now. On FS17, it, uh, FS19, it changed from 17 um, to become two fertilising states needed, 50%, 50%. On seasons, it goes back to three. You may remember that from previous versions. Um, so we have three fertilising states again now. So we've got a light blue, a mid blue, and a dark blue, depending on the fertilising state. Um, so that's something worth bearing in mind as well. There's going to be uh, a few different options. And again, you can check your fields with your Wopster for that. It will tell you what fertilising state it's on in a percentage um, to kind of give you an idea. Right, we need to go to... The actually, we can go to an animal pen, can't we? We don't need to go to the livestock market. Bear with me one second. So, for example, we are here now. Actually, I might go to the livestock market in a second. We're on pigs. This is all different, prices are different, everything changes. We have got new breeds, and the new breeds do different things. Um, the Yorkshire um, is well, I'm not, so I'm not going to go into massive amounts of detail just to say that we've got male and female, we've got pigs that are going to grow very very quickly um, and then we've got ones that are for reproduction for getting more animals um, and then some which are basically for fattening up and selling you know the, the male ones you want if you buy 10 you're going to stay with 10 you're not going to get new pigs um, if you just buy all male pigs the Gloucestershire old spots you buy very very young 0 0.2 years old um, 53 pound in weight so in essence a piglet for 227 and then you fatten that thing up and then you'll make more money the problem with the base game version is that you buy your animals and yes you get the byproducts from them the whole time you have them but then when you come to sell them you make a loss um, because you always sell them for less than you get them for on seasons that's not the case you, you're going to make money on providing you look after them you can kill animals they can die on fs19 uh, on seasons um so if you don't feed them, don't look after them, don't water them, they can die. Um, and you'll start losing animals, um, which is something you don't want to happen. So this one, the old spot, says the old spot is a slower growing animal, but it's much cheaper to purchase initially. Very hardy and great for the starting farmer. We've got the other male version, the Berkshire, 
Berkshire, depends where you're from. Again, £57 at start, 313 to buy. Fast growing animal, requires a modest amount of capital to purchase. It's known for its flavoured meat. Um, again, with the feed for all of these animals, it's spread across the year. So as you feed them, it will tell you how much you're going to need. Uh, I'm going to go into more detail when I do an animals video. Um, but we do have different breeds. So the females, now all of the females you buy on all of the different animal types now, it automatically does like an artificial insemination program, in which case it automatically assumes they have been, you know, inseminated. So they are going to breed anyway, regardless. You don't need to have a mixture of males and females to get that to happen. It's going to happen. Um, they're more expensive. They're known for their carcass quality. The spotted grows relatively fast and can be purchased for a modest amount. The Yorkshire, known as the mother breed, this breed of pig is a very fast growing animal but requires a high amount of capital for the initial purchase. Um, so that's for the pigs. What I am going to do, I'm going to go to the livestock market. So we had a quick look at pigs. Let's have a look at the sheep. Now this obviously, we'll go through all the animal breeds but we're going to look at the sheep. Uh, where are we? So, we've got the Dorset, which is a female. We've got the Merino, female, Suffolk, female, Dorper, female. You only get female sheep, no male sheep. Um, again, they come at different sizes, different weights. They all start at one year old. Um, the Dorset, a large breed of sheep that grows moderately fast, has mod modest wool production, requires a medium amount of feed as an adult. It's relatively prolific and good for 25 to 40 kilograms um 50 to 25 pound lambs so you're going to get varying degrees of wool production versus reproduction some breeds aren't great for wool production but are great for reproduction you're going to get more animals some are going to be way way better for your wool but not as many um that one there says it grows slowly it's not very prolific so that one um it's used for wool production you're going to get more wool from that animal than you are going to get more um, sheep that just kind of makes sense so let's say we've got a few on those um, as far as cows go we have got a whole load going on here we've got limousine we've got beef breeds and we've got dairy breeds um, so we've got the males uh, generally speaking your beef breed so you've got the limousine sala sala i think it is um, and then the brahmins are all male as well um, heat tolerant specific um, they are known for their grain potential good carcass yields um, the sala and the limousine again they're fairly expensive to buy but you fatten them up and you're going to make good money on them um, expensive uh, but feed efficient animal they grow very quickly they give a great price at market um, so they're not too heavy on the feed which is fantastic uh, the sala cheap option for starting farmers known for their high marbling carcasses and they can return a decent investment so it all comes down to your initial investment and then what you're going to make out the end now your Ayrshire's and your Holsteins they're your dairies um, so your Ayrshire um, you can rest assured that low feed consumption and price per head are both two uh, both two well worthy trade-offs for lower milk production so you're not going to get a huge amount of milk production but they're fairly cheap to buy in the first place the Holsteins queen of milk production this breed requires a lot of feed and is expensive to buy up front <coughs> but produces the most milk now with both of those breeds again we're going to go into more detail when i look at animals in more detail um you will not get milk from these immediately these go through a breeding cycle when you buy the females they're artificially inseminated um, they will put on weight they will grow but you will not get milk for nine months until they've had their first calves you won't get any milk which is an interesting twist on this um, you will get milk eventually you will get milk for a certain period of time then when they go back into their next calving cycle the milk will dry up and you'll go through a calving cycle so they're only going to produce milk at certain points um, which again really interesting twist on this um, we've looked at those we looked at the pigs right chickens very quickly say so very quickly um we've got egg layers and we've got um meat birds uh so the males <clears throat> this meat breed extremely fast growing has a, a fast turnaround in profit it requires a lot of feed uh the Rhode Island red hybrid it will give you both eggs and meat uh you need roosters 
um, if you are going to fertilize. If you buy the females, um, you're not going to get any reproduction unless you've got um, a rooster. That's one of the few ones that does change. The other animals all come inseminated. These don't. Um, so if you want um, less feed than any other breeds, you want to go for the white leghorn. Um, and also for eggs, um, the Rhode Island, Ed, Rhode Island Red will give you both. Um, but if you do want to have um, more chickens, you need a rooster. If you do that, egg production will dry up a little bit while they're reproducing. But all the animals will be in a, a kind of staggered cycle, so you won't have all of them not producing eggs at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, it does get quite complicated. <laughs> Uh, and then lastly, we've got our horses. Now, the horses all say zero, which is interesting. They're five grand a pop, usually. Um, we've got a few different ones in here. Black Arabian, Tennessee walking horse. We've got, yeah, we've changed the names of these. Um, and if you've got a, um, a stable, you get paid a stabling fee. You still need to feed them, water them, and exercise them. But every night at midnight, you'll get paid a stabling fee. So the more you have the more work it is because you've got to exercise them more and you'll get a return. You don't have them for 10 days then sell them for 50 grand. That's not the way the horses work anymore on seasons. Um, I'm thinking there is so much more to go through. Uh, immersive ambient sound system. Seasons replaces the wind and rain sounds of the base game with the new system. This new system ties in tightly with the visuals. It's, it is possible to hear how fast the wind is blowing or how heavy it rains or hails. We can get hail as well. Um, what I will do very quickly, I'm going to skip forward. We'll see if we can have a look at a little bit of snow before we finish up. There's going to be things I've missed. I know there are going to be things I've missed, and I'm going to go into more detail. Like I, and I've said that repeatedly, just in case it depends where you're coming into this um, this video, so to speak. I've kind of covered the basics of what you look at initially. Uh, there is a lot more to look at, a lot more to, to kind of get your head around. Um, there is tons on here. What I thought I would do was show you two things in one here at the same time. Things are looking a little bit different here. It's still saying early spring. I've put on the Seasons Geo, the Snowy Lands one, uh, which gives you snow all the time, pretty much. I've sped up time because I was trying to get... Now, here's the thing. The Geo changes all sorts of stuff. Bearing in mind, it's lunchtime, 12.54, and the time is still going up. The sun is not high in the sky. It's not getting light. It's simulating a snowy place. Um and it being cold all year long, you know, somewhere where it just doesn't really get light over the course of the day, which is quite scary. The snow is kind of building as it goes, which is fine. But look at the temperature, minus 18 air temperature, minus 10 ground temperature. That symbol next to the cloud is saying that the ground is frozen. You can't do anything with it. Um, but we do have snow. We have snow on consoles again, which is fantastic. I do like a bit of snow. Um, I said I was going to show it with snow, but it's weird. It just seems so dark. Bear in mind it's now two in the afternoon and it's just not getting light. I think as we go through the year, we might get towards the summer months. Maybe it'll be a little bit brighter, but it's interesting how it changes all the lighting things. Um, what I am going to do is whiz over to a tree and show you the thing, the Wopster. But before I do that, the other thing I was going to show you was this. Uh, I meant to talk about it earlier. If you go into the main menu and go to help bit right at the very end if we scroll across all our different menus we go to help if we scroll all the way down the help menu now what's been added into the bottom is a seasons help menu uh, where are we there we go Let's scroll right the way to there so at the moment we've got basic information about seasons effects with weather Daylight hours can also be affected. That's what we're finding now. Winter days have shorter hours. Uh, weather forecast, soil, crops intro, arable, yields, hay straw and grass trees, weather effects, maintenance economy, hired help, animals intro, animals production, livery stable, seasons menu and HUD. Measurement tool about the Wopster and miscellaneous. So if there's anything you're not sure about, you can always whiz into the help menu. There's a bit of information. It's not hugely comprehensive, but it's enough it might get out of a bit of a you know, a muddle or you might be stuck or not sure about something um i just thought i'd show you just you know it's there the help the help menu is there should you need it it's going to start getting dark again isn't it of course it is 
Oh, so it's not snowing. Oh, yes, get in. That just popped up on the menu. As it gets dark, that feels festive, doesn't it? Lights on, sun's going down, it's wintry, snow's falling. <laughs> I love it. The clouds are more dynamic and with the wind the clouds can change direction too. So it won't always be one way as you kind of get on the base game. Sometimes they'll go that way, sometimes they'll go that way. It depends on the wind speed, wind direction, that kind of thing. Okay, I'll skip forward a little bit. We're on day two of early spring. Like I say, it's still not particularly light. Snow's still coming down which is wonderful. Now before I end this, and it is supposed to be an overview video, it's supposed to be, I know it's going to be quite long because there's so much to cover in the overview itself. Oh, that looks awesome. Jim, I hope you're watching this. That looks just brilliant. Um, I just tried something out in between setting all this up and I tried to get the Hauer snow pack that comes kind of with the mods today for clearing the snow because I thought I'd do a review on that and then edit them all together as separate videos. Every time I tried to lease the Hauer snowpack, I got blue screened. My game crashed every single time. Um, I did it three or four times because I thought oh, maybe it's because I was speeding time up. Maybe it's because I've got the snow um, thing on. Um, but it, it every single time it blue screened. So just be careful if you're on console. You may get a problem with that. Um, what I can show you as well though while we're here the snow mask with shelters and stuff like that if the snow mask is on you won't get snow inside the shelters that's kind of part of what a snow mask is and a snow mask does so if you've got bales and things like that keeps it on there look how deep the snow is though um, so there you go that's it from me on this um, seasons 19 console overview um, I hope you found it useful and informative uh, in some way, shape or form. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.